RCA Victor, world leader in radio, first in recorded music, and first in television, presents the Bill Harris, Alice Faye Show. For your enjoyment, here is the Phil Harris, Alice Faye Show, written by Ray Singer and Dick Chevrolet, with Elliot Lewis, Walter Tetley, Robert North, Janine Roos, Ann Whitfield, Walter Sharp and his music, and yours truly, Bill Foreman. Later in radio, first night, we're going to do something a little different. We're going to dramatize the lives of Phil Harris and Alice Faye. But first, a word from RCA Victor. Throughout the world, RCA is a symbol of progress. RCA's research and exploration of the unknown RCA's continual development of the new has quickened the pace of scientific achievement for over 25 years. Recently, enormous strides have been made by RCA in the field of television. A perfect illustration is RCA Victor's new 17-inch table model superset, the Bristol. The Bristol is absolutely incomparable for quality and performance because the Bristol brings you revolutionary new picture power a completely new circuit system with an electronic supercharger virtually eliminates interference and brings in the clearest, steadiest pictures possible in difficult reception areas. The Bristol's unbelievably fine reception has never been equaled thanks to Picture Power, an exclusive development of RCA Victor. Yes, the Bristol is everything you've ever wanted in the way of television. It's available now. Ask for the Bristol and always look for the name RCA Victor cornerstone of home entertainment for three generations. And now the stars of the RCA Victor program, Alice Faye and Phil Harris! Since this program has been on the air, you people have shown a great interest in the private lives of Phil and Alice. Your many letters have asked, uh, where were they born? How did they become successful? How did Phil meet Alice? Why did Alice marry Phil? <laughs> so tonight, we're going to tell you the life story of Phil Harris and Alice Faye. Our story begins in a little log cabin in the hills of Tennessee, where a baby was born in the year 1886. Wait a minute, wait a minute. <laughs> Get the facts right. Alice was born in New York. <laughs> I was born in the log cabin in Tennessee in 1911. Now take it from there. In 1911, a baby was born to Harry and Dolly Harris. It was two o'clock in the morning when a doctor brought little Phil Harris into the world. What are you slapping me for, Dolly? I didn't know it was gonna look like this. <laughs> I didn't mean to slap you, Harry. I, I was just excited. Congratulations, Mr. Harris. You should be proud to be the father of such a fine, bouncing baby. Uh, Doc, tell me, is it a boy or a girl? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> we'll have to wait till it stops bouncing. <laughs> or whatever it is, I suggest you call it Twitch. Oh, it's a boy, and I think he's adorable. Now, our families must think so, too. Look, they're all sitting around beaming. Yeah, all except your father. He just sits there with a wooden expression on his face. Oh, oh, I'm sure he likes him. Daddy, how do you like your new grandson? Me like him. We keep him. Ugh. <laughs> He's a handsome lad. Now, I'll bet when he grows up, he'll be a devil with the women. And his mother was right. He was a devil with the women, but he didn't wait till he grew up. In fact, Phil Harris had quite a reputation by the time he entered kindergarten. Please, please, little boy, don't bother me. I'm busy. Ah, oh, put away them dolls, honey. You got me. <laughs> You're awful fresh. Who are you, anyway? Who am I? Where you been, kid, under a rock? <laughs> Phil Harris Oh yes, I've heard the other girls talking about you But you're not handsome at all Oh, you better get some rest, Myrtle <laughs> Yes, Phil had a weakness for girls and it retarded his studies But he was a determined young man And he finally managed to reach the fourth grade 
where he met his first real love of his life. Please, please, Philip, don't bother me. I'm busy. Well, look, honey, let's quit this joint and run away together. <laughs> I couldn't do that. I can't leave school in the middle of the year. Why not? They can always get another teacher. <laughs> Now, let's face it. Would you rather be a teacher the rest of your life or have me? I'd rather be a teacher. Oh, Miss Brooks, somebody slipped you a bad apple. <laughs> and so, rebuffed by this woman, Phil quit grammar school at the tender age of 23. <laughs> he went out into the world, but he was unequipped to face it. Tired and discouraged, he sank lower and lower until he reached the very depths. That's where he met Frank Gremlin. <laughs> One day, Phil was walking along Skid Row when suddenly, <laughs> suddenly a figure stepped out of the shadows and said, Hey, bud, you want to buy a hot banjo? <laughs> when you get lost, Jack, can't you see I'm busy? Hot chestnuts, get your hot chestnuts. <laughs> Jelly apples, shoelaces, razor blades, geranium seeds. <laughs> nice looking push cart you got there. I'll have a three cent glass of Muscatel. <laughs> With or without horseradish? <laughs> without. Yes, sir. Here you are. That'll be three cents, please. Charge it to my account. Do you have your charger plate with you, sir? <laughs> Tell me, what's a clean, cut-looking boy like you doing with a push card? What's your name? Phil Harris. What's yours? Frank Remley. Where are you from, Curly? Nashville, Tennessee. You're from Nashville, Tennessee? Yeah. Well, this is a coincidence. Gee, it certainly is a small world. Why, we're practically neighbors. No kidding. Where are you from? Fargo, North Dakota. <laughs> Hey, Remley, I see you got a banjo case there. You a musician? No. Then what do you got in the case? Chestnuts, jelly apples, shoelaces, <laughs> and geraniums. Wait a minute, buddy. There ain't enough room on this side of the street for both of us. How can I make any money if you're selling to the public, though? Take it easy. I don't sell to the public. I'm a wholesaler. Oh. <laughs> Anything you need to replenish your stock? You seem to be a little low on buggy whips. <laughs> Oh, thanks, kid. I don't get much call for them. You have any good rap leggings? <laughs> hey, how long you been with this business? Not long. I used to play the banjo. You did? Hey, that's a coincidence. This certainly is a small world. Do you play the banjo, too? No, I do needlepoint. <laughs> hey, but I used to play the drums. Hey, I was a pretty good drum. Hey, wait a minute. What? I got an idea. Let you and I form a band. You on the banjo and me on the drums. And they did. Of course, it wasn't very good when they started. It sounded like this. <laughs> However, as the years progressed, they worked hard and gradually kept adding new members to the band. Until four years later, the band had 18 members and sounded like this. <laughs> Some Remley, we don't seem to be getting any place. <laughs> well, it's your fault. We'd have a better band if you didn't waste so much time with the dames. It's always dames, dames, dames. Dames don't mean nothing to me. I devoted my whole time to forming this band. I personally hired the best talent that money can buy, but there seems to be something wrong with the band. What can it be? Maybe it's because we only got two musicians and 16 girl vocalists. <laughs> I happen to like a big choir. <laughs> Curly, why don't you forget the women? Someday they'll be your downfall. Nah, they won't. I'm just marking time until I meet the right girl. Sometimes I wonder if I'll ever meet the right one. Little did Phil know that at that moment, in a tenement in New York City, a child was born. A child who was destined to grow up and flash like a meteor across the American scene. A child who would achieve greatness and endear itself to the hearts of people in every walk of life. For this child was... With all that build-up, I thought it was going to be at least Tallulah Bankhead. 
<laughs> From a humble beginning, Alice worked her way up out of the chorus. And then one night, she got her big chance at the Hollywood restaurant in New York, where a famous band leader was appearing. My time is your time. Your time is my time. There's no time like our time. I'm no one like you. Hi, ho, everybody. This is Rudy Valley, and tonight I'd like to introduce a young lady who is making her first public appearance as a singer. This little girl is my protege. I've coached her and taught her everything I know about singing, and I'm sure you'll like her. Go ahead, Miss Faye. My time is your time. Your time Miss Faye. is my Miss Faye. time. in the head or something? My dear child, I've told you time and again not to sing through your nose. All right, already. I'm sorry. Gee whiz. You don't want me to sing through my nose? What am I supposed to do, sing through my ears? You're supposed to sing through your mouth. You don't sing through your mouth. I can't. I keep my money there. <laughs> now, let's try your song once more, and remember, this time, watch your diction and sing from your diaphragm. In the cool, cool, cool of the evening Tell them I'll be there In the cool, cool, cool of the evening Better save a chair When the party's getting the glow on And singing fills the air In the shank of the night When the doings are right You can tell them I'll be there Sue wants a barbecue, Sam wants to boil a ham, Grace votes for booyah base too. Jake wants a weenie bake steak and a layer cake, he'll get a tummy ache too. We'll rent a tent or teepee, let the town crier cry, and if it's RSVP, this is what she'll reply. In the cool, cool, cool of the evening, tell them I'll be there. In the cool, cool, cool of the evening Better save Mammy a chair When the party's getting the glow on And singing fills the air In the shake of the night too, When the doings are right So you can tell them I'll be there In the cool, cool, cool of the evening Tell them we'll be there In the cool, cool, cool of the evening Slick them on my head when the party's getting a glow on And singing fills the air If we ain't in the drink And there's something to drink Then you can tell them And that was the beginning of Alice's career. She became a success as a singer, and finally Hollywood beckoned. She made several pictures and became a big star. In the meantime, Phil had taken his band to Hollywood, where he was playing at the Coconut Grove. Curly, we've really improved over four years ago. <laughs> yeah, man, that new arrangement is solid. <laughs> well, why don't they recognize us, Remley? We're still not getting any place. What are you talking about? We're playing at the Coconut Grove. I know, but who hears you in the washroom? <laughs> <laughs> now, Curly, you're right. We ain't getting any place. Why don't we give up and go home? You can, but not me. I know I've got talent, and I'm going to prove it. I've got everything it takes to make a successful career. I'm going to be a wealthy man, and I know just how I'm going to do it. How? I'll marry a rich dame. <laughs> I got one all picked out. You know something? I saw her picture in the paper the other day. Yeah? What's her name? Aggie Khan. <laughs> <Man. laughs> hey, Remley. Hmm? She's kind of fat, man, but she's loaded. 
You know something? Every year they give her her weight in diamonds Curly. and she's got... Curly. Why? That's Aga Khan and he's a man. Well, that wouldn't work, would it? No. <laughs> Don't worry. I've got a substitute. Hey, Remley, you remember that blonde we saw in pictures? You know, the one that was in Alexander's Ragtime Band and Tin Pan Alley and Lillian Russell? I don't remember her. What's her name? I don't know, but you remember she's the one who always stands between Donna Michi and Tyrone Powell. <laughs> remember? Hey, wait a minute. I just remembered her name. It's Alice Faye. And from what I hear about her, she's got money she doesn't know what to do with. Curly, I'm surprised at you. Wanting to marry this girl just because she's got money. A guy's got to be pretty low. Please, please. <laughs> Her money has nothing to do with it. For the first time in my life, Remley, I've fallen in love. And I'm going to find out where she lives, and the first thing tomorrow morning, I'm going over and propose to her. Miss Fay, I'm sorry to wake you at five o'clock in the morning, but will you marry me? <laughs> oh, what are you talking about? I don't even know you. My name is Remley. I'm madly in love with you, and I want you to be mine. Can't you picture it? You and I married with a home in the country and children. Lots of children. One, two, three, four, five. Now, wait a minute. I couldn't marry you. Why not? I don't love you. Well, it's a fine time to tell me after we had all those children. <laughs> No, if you marry me, you won't regret it Ramley You'll... Oh, Curly What are you doing here? Same thing you're doing here, you double-crosser And who are you? Oh, uh, my name is Phil Harris Oh, oh, of course Isn't your band playing at the Coconut Grove? Yes, we... How did she know? <laughs> my brother told me <laughs> What's on your mind, Mr. Harris? Will you marry me, Miss Faye? Oh, don't be ridiculous. I think you're both crazy, and I never want to see either one of you again. Goodbye. But I was not to be denied. <laughs> I loved this woman, and I wouldn't rest until she was mine. Frankie told me to forget her. He said no woman was worth it, but I couldn't forget her. So two nights later, two nights later, <laughs> a fortnight later... <laughs> Holy force my way into her house. <laughs> oh, so it's you again. What are you doing here? Can't you see we're busy? Oh, I'm terribly sorry to bother you while you're counting your money. <laughs> please, please go away. And never come back here again. <laughs> Where were we, Alice? Well, oh, yeah. A million and one, a million and two. Million All right, Remley. Miss Faye, why do you want to waste your time with this left-handed money counter when you can have me a right-handed money counter? <laughs> look, besides that, I'll give you romance. Well, you, uh, don't look very romantic to me. Are you kidding? <laughs> I'm the greatest lover since Cyrano de Bourbonac. <laughs> hey, baby, why don't you come on? Let you and me go out and live it up a little. So I went out with him. I had to find out if he was for real. <laughs> One date led to another, and before I knew what was happening to me, I fell in love with him. Then one night he proposed in his own quaint manner. Well, you finally got me, you lucky little... <laughs> <laughs> You're nuts about me, too, ain't you? Oh, yes, dear. It's been such a wonderful courtship. Every night, candy, flowers, perfume, trinkets. Yeah, and you better cut it out, honey. You're going to spoil me. <laughs> hey, look, Alice, let's stop horsing around. Are you going to marry me or ain't you? Well, I don't know. Frankie wants to marry me, too. That mooch is always hanging around. Forget him. We were meant for each other. Come on, honey, what do you say? All right, Phil. I'll marry you. Well, if that's the way the wind blows, Alice, I'll thank you to get off my lap. <laughs> Why don't you quit hanging around? Alice is going to marry me tomorrow. Oh, no. No, Phil. I won't marry you until you're a success and able to support me in the manner to which I'm accustomed. You're dead, Curly. <laughs> I am not. I'll be a success. Alice, honey, with you as my incentive, I'll amount to something. And he did. With this great love as a driving force, he went on to new heights. He added more members to his orchestra, and gradually his band became louder and louder. 
Curly started making record. He had one great hit after another. Famous song hits like... Won't you come with me, too? Yes, that was his first big hit. <laughs> that was followed by... Bill Jackson was a... Yes, that was a great one, too. <laughs> after that came one of his biggest successes. As I... That was a money <laughs> But probably his greatest success was the song I know you're all waiting to hear. Surely you remember. Oh, what memories that was. Wait a minute. <laughs> what in the world's the matter with you, Remley? That was Von Monroe's big hit. What? That was the introduction to Riders in the Sky, and you know it. <laughs> this is supposed to be the story of my life, and I'm going to sing a song and dedicate it to my future wife, Alice Faye. Young Johnny Jones. Yes, that was our song. <laughs> and Phil did become a success, and I set the date for our wedding. I'll never forget that day. We were married at our house, and just before the ceremony, while we were waiting for the minister, Phil and I were talking to our friends and family. Oh, gee, honey, you look beautiful. We're going to have a wonderful wedding. Everybody's here. Oh, Daddy. Not yet, Phyllis. You're in the next scene. <laughs> Get lost, kid. You're rushing me. <laughs> you know something, Alice? I'm so happy. And Frankie G, kid, I'm glad you came. Because I know you're in love with Alice, too, but I'm, I'm sure you're going to take it like a man. No hard feelings, Curly. She chose you instead of me, and... That's the way it is. Say la guerre. Thank you, General. I knew you'd be big about it. <laughs> hey, look, Frankie. After the ceremony, would would you like to kiss the bride? Well, I'd rather not, Curly, but before the ceremony, I'd like to say one last thing to her. Do you mind? No. No. Go ahead. Alice, will you marry me? <laughs> Don't you ever give up? And I know she's in love with me, aren't you, dear? No, I'm not. I love Phil, and I'm going to marry him. Alice, I'm going to give you one last chance to make up your mind. Are you going to marry Curly or me? Curly. Let me put it this way. <laughs> Which would you rather spend your life with, a lousy drummer or a talented banjo player? A lousy drummer. <laughs> I'd like to try it one more way. <laughs> What do you prefer, a man with brains or a man with good look? Wait a minute, I'm not in that one at all. <laughs> Remley, why don't you give up? Alice loves me, and there isn't any other man in her life. That's what you think, Mac! <laughs> <laughs> Who is this? Oh, this is Julius Abruzio. He's the grocery boy. Uh, Julius, Julius, I want you to meet my future husband. This is a husband. <laughs> Miss Faye, have you forgotten about us? You was going to marry me, wasn't you? Alice, is this true? Is you going to was? Oh, don't be silly, Phil. The boy just has a crush on me. A crush, she calls it. <laughs> I love you and I know you love me. What do you mean you know? Well, this morning at the market, I took a bunch of radishes and picked them. She loves me, she loves me not, she loves me, she loves me not, and they come out, she loves me. You better make a liar out of them radishes. Julius, <laughs> <laughs> please don't make a scene. I like you, but you're just a child. Yeah, you're young enough to be her son. So what? You're old enough to be her father. <laughs> Alice, now that you have a father and a son, all you need is a husband. How about that? <laughs> Look, you guys, Alice is marrying me, and that's all there is to it. Miss Faye, is this final? I'm afraid it is, Julia. That does it. If I've lost you, I've lost everything. There's no use in me going on. There's only one thing for me to do. Tomorrow morning, they'll be dragging the river for me, little body. But I won't be there. <laughs> Will you two beat it? Get on out of here. Come on, Alice, let's have the ceremony. Or does anybody else have any objection? Uh, me no like pale face squaw. She too fat to fit canoe. <laughs> Will you get back to your...
your T.P. grandpa and take that tom-tom with you. Come on, Alice, the minister's waiting. Let's get married. And so they were married. As the years went by, they were blessed with two children. Theirs is a happy little family. If you will look in on the Harris home nearly any night, you'll find the following scene. Gee, Alice, we're lucky to have a beautiful home, money in the bank, and two wonderful children. Two wonderful children. Now, fellas. <laughs> Daddy. What is it, dear? How long have you and Mommy been married? Ten years, and they've been... Ten happy years, haven't they, Alice? Oh, they certainly have, dear. You're the only man I ever loved, and I couldn't be happy with anyone else. Oh, you're just saying that. <laughs> I still think you're in love with me. That's what you think, Mac. I'm the only man she ever really loved. Why don't you two guys give up already? Yes, Frankie, for heaven's sake, can't you take a hint? I've been married to Phil for ten years, and we have two children. Ah, uh, you're just playing hard to get. <laughs> She did that to make me jealous. She did it to make me jealous. To make you jealous? Yeah. She did it to make me jealous. Now, Come on, Alice. Let's Banjo. go to bed. This will go on for Banjo. hours. Good night, Banjo. fellas. Banjo. Turn the lights out when you're finished. Alice and Phil will be back in just a moment. The biggest new words in television are picture power. That's RCA Victor's astounding new TV achievement that brings you the clearest reception possible with virtually no interference. And that's true, Bill. I went myself to see RCA Victor's new supersets with picture power demonstrated in a definite fringe area up at Oxnard, California, where the signals must come across mountains 60 miles from Los Angeles. Mr. Billinger, one of the biggest TV dealers in Oxnard, showed me how these new RCA Victor supersets picked up channels that he said had never come in satisfactorily before. So here is a concrete case where RCA Victor's picture power solved a very, very tough reception problem, bringing in beautiful pictures, clear and steady, with real definition. Right, Phil. And it follows that if picture power can pull in channels where other television sets fail... That means that you will get clearer, better pictures with sharper detail anywhere you live with RCA Victor's new super sets. And incidentally, folks, we'd like to hear from you personally. Whether you live deep in the city or far in the country, whether you are a television dealer or a user, drop me a line personally in care of NBC, Department A, Hollywood, California, and tell me how your new RCA Victor picture power set is working. I'd love to hear. <laughs> This is Phil again. The Red Cross has asked us to remind everyone again about the critical shortage of whole blood for our wounded in Korea. Where one or two pints were used in the last war, four to eight are being used now, and it's saving lives. But they gotta have blood. So make a date with the Red Cross and save a life of an American boy. Good night, everybody. Good night, everybody. <laughs> The program is produced and directed by Paul Phillips. Included in today's cast were Barbara Eiler, Evelyn Eaton, Rosemary Iannone, Gerald Moore, Iron Eyes Cody, Eddie Marr, and Stuffy Singer. Rudy Valley was impersonated by Bob Hopkins. The part of Frankie Remley was played by Elliot Lewis. Remember, whether you're buying a television set, a radio, a Victrola phonograph, or records, put your faith in the cornerstone of American home entertainment for three generations. RCA Victor, world leader in radio and... Next, the Theater Guild on the air, starring Rosalind Russell on NBC.